I've always had a relationship with water and I am constantly discovering just how deep that relationship is. I have found that the ocean has become my host and teacher. The sea facilitates my healing. Black people endure unimaginable challenges in Canada. I understand and live with the consequences of systemic racism and colonization in this nation. The fight for liberation is comparable to the struggle to keep my head above water. Breathing and staying afloat is an embodiment of my daily life and practice. I've always been passionate about showing Black excellence and reauthoring the stereotypical narratives of Black people. There's this idea that, you know, as a Black person, you don't do certain things. Particularly Black children, and especially Black people from North Preston. The North Preston Surf Program is a program that is designed to teach people of African descent how to surf. We haven't seen kids in North Preston or from North Preston really taking up space on the water. And I knew that this surfing program was going to be the vehicle to do that. I was contacted by Beth, the president of the Surfing Association in Nova Scotia, to explore the possibilities of starting a surfing program in North Preston. But I didn't know Beth, and I had never tried surfing before. I had said to Beth that I'd be open to meeting with her, and I, you know, was willing to try it myself. I was connected to Lumia through a friend. Um, she was brought forward as a person from North Preston who works with youth who might be interested in working with me on this program. I worked for a long time as a stunt double in the film industry, and I did a lot of water stunts. The show Digstown, which is a CBC series about a black female who is a surfer and a lawyer, was looking for somebody to play the stunt double for the surfing scenes. And they said, yeah, we'll just find a black surfer to do those scenes. I said, I don't think we have anybody like that in this province. And then they said, oh, well, why is that? We started this conversation about black people and water. One of the writers was like, well, I don't swim, and my whole family doesn't swim. And then the showrunner himself said, well, I'm learning how to swim right now. I'm in adult swimming lessons. After that conversation, I could not look away. I was really affected by that. And then because of my work that I had done in the First Nations communities and because of my position with the Surf Association of Nova Scotia, I felt compelled to take action. And you have a leash that's about the same length as the board and you attached to it, so. We sat down and we talked about surf safety and she drew out, you know, wave patterns to me, talked to me about rip currents. And so, you know, it turned out that surfing, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. I 
after I felt comfortable with, with what we talked about, we went surfing later that day. Surfing that day was transformative. For me, the moment where something clicked was when she pushed me into my first wave. It wasn't so much about, you know, me catching the wave, but the wave catching me. And I think that that was kind of one of the profound moments that I kind of had this, this idea that really spun into this bigger vision of, of what it means to be held by the water. There was this essence of my ancestors, you know, kind of connecting with me in, in this, this interesting way that I have never felt before. And I think that it speaks to the magical elements of, of what happens with the water and, and just that story about, you know, how we came here. And I think I just received a new understanding of why I was here. North Preston is the largest and oldest Indigenous Black community in Canada. It's neighboring East Preston, Cherry Brook, and Lake Loon, and that's what makes up the Preston Township. Our community is marginalized in the sense that we have been segregated. We were historically given poor agricultural land and put in Preston to fend for ourselves. The Preston Township was populated by several migrations of Black and Indigenous folks, including descendants of Africville, Black Loyalists, Jamaican Maroons, Black refugees, and enslaved people running away to seek freedom. We also know that some of our people were already here, enslaved in Canada. That part of our history, people don't want to talk about. Slavery existed in Canada, and we feel the remnants of that. I think about the ancestral legacy of the hardships and adversity that our ancestors face. But somehow, some way, folks were able to survive and make North Preston what it is today. Why do we have to fight so hard for the things that we need? We fight for better education for our children. We fight for access to fresh, nourishing food. We fight for equal opportunities to grow and develop our community. North Preston unfortunately gets a lot of bad press in the media. We see headlines about gun and gang violence. We're seen as being uneducated and involved in criminal activity. It's unfortunate because people who don't know the real North Preston only hear these messages. Despite all of that, we've learned to use that negativity as fuel to propel us forward. And we showcase the best aspects of who we are as a community. We are a community that has a spirit like no other place. And you're leaving out of North Preston or you're coming in, somebody will wave to you, whether you're black, white, or green. Hi. You watch when you leave out of here how they're going to do that. It's everybody. You pass five cars, they'll wave. To Jesus, Lord, I... The church is the foundation of our community. We've come this far by faith is a saying that we have in North Preston. I can't imagine what North Preston would be without our faith and our beliefs. I think about for generations how my family sat in the same queue. I'd have this vision of my grandma there to the left of me and my other grandma there to the right and just like sing and dance and cry. The generations before us used the church as their form of organizing and activism. Without that contribution, we wouldn't be where we are today. You can let go of a lot of stuff that's inside. It's a place of healing. When you're passing each of those houses, you're passing histories of people who've lived there for generations, and so we call these homesteads. I haven't looked at this in a long time, like years. 
I always look at that way. Why? Look that side. You made this? Yeah. It always was just me and her. Oh, I was always working full time because I had to support her. I think when I was having parent-teacher meetings, and they always said how she was a great leader, and when she ran for um, president of the school, um, that's when I knew, like, she can conquer the world. It's just a blessing to have such a, a honorable daughter that you're so proud of. Like, yeah. I've always seen people doing good in North Preston. It's just been lots of moments of, of seeing people give back to each other and, and to really kind of hold this level of, of community up that basically gets instilled in you as a young person that you just keep giving back and you are taking care of each other. And so I think that that really was my foundation and that really helped me to, you know, as a young person grow up with this this feeling that I wanted to give back to this place. I wanted to, to be a person in the community that other people could like depend on and also like look up to. Block House came as a vision that I had one day. I was driving home and I had had a really hard evening and I didn't want to go home to face my mom because I was really upset. And so I wanted, I just pulled off on the side of the street and just kind of had a moment to myself. And I said that I really wish that there was a place that I could go so that I could have, you know, some time to collect myself. And I think that's when, you know, the vision for Block House came. I started Block House out of the basement of my mom's house because, you know, I wanted that drop-in space for youth. I feel like getting Block House established and creating it really helped me to bring all of my passions into one place by inviting young people into our house and, and having this safe space. Um, we really started to see that there was an appetite for, for this type of programming. It was created to be a space and place that folks can say, we want to do some work with North Preston. We want to connect with that community. And then the surfing opportunity came up. And so that really helped to really solidify what Block House was created for. The surf program is symbolic in so many ways. It represents freedom and liberation. One of the, the hardest things to talk about for me and our experiences is about the transatlantic slave trade. How devastating that we have this as a part of our history that everybody has to grapple with. We're talking about people who have been traveling by foot, by boat, being stolen from Africa originally. All of that emotional trauma how many people were on a boat together and, and the type of seasickness that was happening or the disease and being chained together so that you couldn't escape. And there was lots of people who threw themselves overboard because they'd rather die. They still feel the essence of that violence and, and that's what's being passed down. And we're really, as a, a people, trying to reconcile what it means to just be. That's one of the things that I'm thinking about, you know, with North Preston and this program and, and what I see on that beach is that these are children who are settled here. They're going to learn about the transatlantic slave trade. We're going to tell them. But for now, we're in a space of really building a new relationship with this ocean. We take all of that ugliness and all of that, that horror and turn it into something beautiful. I'm excited about seeing how big the waves are and surfing. Last, last week they were really small, but then Last week, they were really, really big. big. When I jumped, I could barely go over top yeah, of them. Because, like, yeah. usually they would lift me up, but these ones just put me on. <laughs> it's just fun being at the beach every Tuesday because a lot of people didn't have that, but now they do because of the program. 
Well, when the kids leave the front step in the morning with their goat surfing, I feel proud that they have this opportunity. Well, I don't really know much about surfing, but I thought it was a great idea for the kids to be exposed to that. It's teaching uh, our young kids that they can achieve anything. They don't hesitate to get up in the morning like today is a surfing day, so we want to go. It's exciting. It makes our day go so much better because we're getting to get in the water and we love the water. Catching waves, that's what they call, come on, let's go and catch waves, so. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but yeah, she's catching waves. Well, they all are now. Over the last two years, we've had weekly surf lessons in the summer months and have had over 200 people come through participating. With that number comes families, friends, supporters, volunteers. Okay, we working on this leg? The North Preston Surf Program begins with everybody arriving. And there's hugs and there's a lot of excitement. We just start handing out wetsuits left, right and center coordinating people with a one-on-one -on -one volunteer to take them into the water and a board. And then the people who are new, who have never surfed before, kind of form a group and go with the instructor who runs the lesson on the beach for the first hour. The second hour of the day is a lot more freeform. It's just kids playing in the waves. You know, we're all out there up to our necks, just jumping over waves, playing games, throwing seaweed at each other. It's very pure and very joyful, and it seemed to happen without fail every single week. I always dreamed of going surfing. And I would like dream of what it would feel like of being a surfer. So. What I like most about surfing is that you can feel confident about yourself. It's definitely opened my mind up to the sport of surfing. I love it. I'm like smitten by it. When I stand up on that surfboard, my blood rushes. It's on fire and even if it's for a split second, even if you're out there for four hours and you stand up one time, it's all deserving for that one moment. I was excited just thinking of like all the TV shows and movies of like people abandoned and stuff. Yeah. Because that's actually, yeah, that's interesting because I think about like, how many times have you seen like black people on TV like surfing? None. Exactly, right? That's kind of like one of the reasons why we wanted to start this program because like we want for it to be um, something that we can all access to so, and be like black power. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I just loved it and so I got so many nieces and nephews out there. We never had those opportunities when we were young. Never, you know. Martin Luther King would say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. <laughs> I actually had a moment when I was putting the wetsuit on the child and I see her little toes stick through the wetsuit. It's such a program that is so visual and real. I had a chance to talk to one of the moms and she said like, you know, they want to be able to expose their children to lots of different things, but it's expensive. And so being able to like try surfing for free or have that cost like basically covered is, is really amazing for them when you have three children, right? So it, I just like was just thinking about the parents who are really grateful for the opportunity to bring their children to a program. There's like this really beautiful space that we're in right now, of, like giving everybody a chance to kind of get connected to nature, to the ocean, to themselves, to their children. Like it's just healing and holistic in so many ways. It's the little things. It's like the way they pick up the board, the way they get on the board, the way they just, they'll throw some wax on there because they know what that's all about. And you see all those little things coming together for some of those kids who this is their second year. And that's amazing. And I think like, wow, like had I been 12 years old when I started surfing, like imagine the advantage it is just to like surf at such a young age and get confident at such a young age. By the time they're 20, they're gonna be you know, super independent shredders. <laughs> what I love most about surfing, there's so many things to love. 
I think it's the connection to nature. It it just seems so pure and the energy so clear and peaceful for me. If I have a million things going on in my mind or if I'm busy and there have been times I've come to the coast and it's like a hurried little snippet of time in between a bunch of work stuff going on and it's just has the time in the ocean has a way of just clearing everything out. I think it's so empowering for young people to be out in the water and especially for the youth from Preston to come and have like coaching to really kind of uplift them and show them how capable they are. Showing up this year and having this challenge in myself of just being pregnant and needing to honor where I am in myself, but I can't not go. I need to be there and to kind of bear witness and hold space. It is giving a whole community of people and the generations that will come a whole new experience of the water. It's always really challenging for me, even the ideas that other people had of me being a woman of color surfing. I got a lot of people who just, oh, like, why are you doing that? And you must be the only, like, black person to surf in the East Coast. And, and just these kind of things that people that wouldn't even realize it was kind of offensive or realize, like, that there's so much behind the why of me being the only one out there in those times. For me, I just feel that the program, it's really shifting the landscape of how surfing looks out here. Even the pictures coming up from the program and, and people being more accustomed to seeing like people of color in a wetsuit and seeing us with a surfboard and seeing us catching waves. It's like, it changes in our minds what we believe is possible. The North Preston Surf Program is guidance for people who didn't even know they needed it. Because for the most part, people don't look at surfing and race together. And I think for most of the participants, they may not quite look at it that way yet. Or if they do, it's minuscule to the amount of fun they're having. Which is kind of the goal, right? Is to pull them in without realizing why they weren't pulled in to begin with. My parents didn't have access to learning how to swim because their parents didn't have access and their parents didn't and so on and so forth. Because realistically, if your lineage comes from the Atlantic slave trade, if you began knowing how to swim in Africa, which most coastal people would have, you, you were very discouraged to know how to swim. I mean, as horrible as it sounds, it would be like cattle knowing how to swim away. So they didn't want that, obviously. So. Even if you knew how to swim and you were on a plantation, you, you surely wouldn't show it because that's practically a death sentence. From that, the whole inception of black people not swimming was sort of created. It just sort of got lost. It was a privilege that got lost along the way. Being one of the only black surfers out there, usually the only black surfer out there, is super lonely. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a positive experience to paddle for waves and to surf on them. But when you're sitting there and you're alone, you're essentially super alone as a person of color. Everybody else in the water can't relate to your experience as a surfer. And then having to learn surf culture and then learn it all and be like, oh, I'm not in that. Ooh, I'm not in that either. You guys think, no, not in that. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, where do I fit? Everyone has that beginner and intermediate stage throughout their surfing. But then to couple in the fact that you're black is a whole different thing that many surfers and most surfers can't relate to. There's a whole process of just internal struggle of even getting rid of those barriers to even be vulnerable and to step out of that box and be like, all right, cool, let me take this chance. Growing up, you know, you try and find people to emulate or people to look up to. And as a young black kid who decided to do extreme sports, there didn't exist so much. 
you're like, how do I do this? How do I begin? And I think when you have a role model, at least you get to jump past that step, the how do I begin step. With the North Preston Surf Program, I guess like I'm in that position too now for kids and it's, it's huge for me. Being there with them, helping them paddle, hearing their questions, answering their questions, holding on the back of the board so they don't eat it. Like that's, that's it. That's what the goal is and they love it and I love it probably more than they do. <laughs> When I was, I mean, probably like three is when I started swimming, which was actually younger than you're allowed to join swim lessons. But mom and dad were like, no, 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 he's swimming for sure. Because they didn't swim. They still don't know how to swim. And I, I'm grateful for that. Grateful for them. So originally it was safety reasons. They were like, no, he's going to swim. So I started at the YMCA, took some lessons, and then from there, I just kept going with the lessons and then became a competitive swimmer when I was probably about seven. I'm pretty sure I was the only person of color, definitely on my team. I've never competed with anybody else of color. I know that's changing now, which is excellent. But I mean, back then as a child, you notice it, but you don't notice it because you're so used to it. And I was, I don't know, maybe five. And my mom took me to the bus. And we would go every Saturday to go swimming. And dad's at work. And we'd hop on the bus. And this time, it just happened to be a new bus driver. And he didn't know who we were, which realistically shouldn't have made a difference. But we get on the bus. And mom puts her money in. And I walk up a couple little steps. And then he's like, oh, OK, no, you have to pay. And then I was like, oh, but like I'm a little kid. And then mom had a whole discussion with him. And I remember her pulling out my birth certificate from her purse and showing it to them and be like, no, no, but we're not going to get on the bus now, though, because you don't want us on the bus. We don't want to be on the bus. So I remember us getting off. And I think, I don't know if we walked to the Y or if someone came and picked us up. That was like one of my pivotal moments as a child, looking back now and being like, wow. That guy really wasn't going to let me on the bus because I was black. It's really important to have more representation in the water because if people don't see themselves reflected, then they're going to miss out on an opportunity that they could potentially love. We wouldn't have been able to do that without Darrell and Rachel and folks like myself putting ourselves in that position to try something new and say, this is cool, like we can do this. And I think what, what has happened is that we now have a generation of, of young people who, who, who surf and, and they identify with surfing as an activity that they do and that they do really well. And so it's been nice to kind of see how we've been able to, in this short time, shift the vision of, of who is a surfer in Nova Scotia and who isn't. And, and that idea that we are now a part of the community and, and that we really take up space there. I really felt that my space in the program was to step in as like a woman of color for the little girls and for the mamas and for the grandmamas who maybe, you know, felt scared of the ocean or felt like it wasn't their place. And even though I felt very timid in myself and that I wasn't, you know, as good as I wanted to be yet, um, that I still needed to be there and to be a part of it and to kind of hold that space down for all of the women who might see me and say, well, if she can, then I can. And, you know, if she's out there, then I can go out there and bring that awareness forward for the people that might come behind us. You know, from the beginning, when you first start surfing and it's like a whole new experience and you're trying to figure out how to lay on the board, how to paddle the board, what a wave is, the white water, all of it. It's all so new and it's, it's uncomfortable if you, if you want to progress. You're out there and you're uncomfortable in the environment, you're uncomfortable in your own sort of being and your mental state at that time because it's new and it's kind of awkward and you're kind of awkward, you know? It's like you're in grade school again. You're like, ooh, like what do I do out here? What do I do with my hands? And, but you, you sort of, continue 
with that uncomfortable process and you, you learn from it and you're able to take that and bring it on land and use that in your everyday life, whether that's with school or with relationships or interactions or anything, really. I was a firefighter, now I'm going to be a lawyer. And in both of those careers or professions, I'm always going to be looked at as a black, insert, whatever. Black lawyer, black surfer, black firefighter. So you never get to lose the title of black. And I do all that I do so that one day you can. So that one day someone is just a lawyer or just a surfer. You don't have to always be a black, insert activity. And it doesn't matter if like I'm in a suit or a wetsuit. Not everyone, but the majority of people will look at me as a black person. And the connotations that people carry with that is that I will be lesser than. The Surfing Association of Nova Scotia hosted the Paddle Out event in solidarity with Black Lives. We were invited to, to work with them to, to put on this event. And the focus was really to, to bring people together at a time of such loss and, and tragedy. When we think about what was going on at that time, we had had, you know, the loss of George Floyd that took over everybody's news feeds and it was just on everybody's awareness. And then we had the loss of Breonna Taylor and though these are global examples of, of lives lost, we still have memories and experiences of, of that type of loss that we've seen here. That day, I was so amazed by the amount of people who showed up. You know, what members of our community kind of came to, to share moments with us to say, we're with you. This place, this land, this space is magic. And I just think about like all the bodies and the people who are here and I can like, I can just imagine what it's like when we actually start to to be like this in the world. Today we stand here in solidarity against racism. For those that were, for those that are, and for those that will continually be racially oppressed. So as we paddle out today, I ask you that with each stroke and with each breath, that you exhale whatever's been holding you back. So rise and stand and shout, but do anything but be silent. It's time to use your breath for those that no longer have the privilege to draw breath. Yes, I gotta get some pics of her and some video. She'll get mad at me if I don't. <laughs> she said, if I'm not getting it, I gotta take videos. My dad is definitely my biggest fan, always supporting me. And it's a little embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> you ran out of waves. <laughs> hey, you ran out of juice. I've been trying to get my dad out there swimming and like surfing with me. But he can't swim, and he's too, like, of a wuss. She's in her glory, not a care in the world. And here I'm waiting for her, like, to, to freak out and pan, to run and save her. She doesn't need me. He didn't have, like, those opportunities like we do now growing up doing it, so he didn't really learn how to swim. It's amazing to watch my daughter, Isla, surf. You know, she came here. She was a little nervous at first. And then she got in the water, and she never looked back. Like, she was like, Dad, I want to go, I want to go. Like, now it's... Dad, I want a board. Dad, I want a board. So she wants to do it, and I want her to do it. You know, I grew up in, in my community, and I wasn't allowed to lake. I was allowed to fish. That was it. Uh, if I got in the lake, I got in trouble. So it was, don't go to the lake, don't get in. Me watching Isla, the first time she got up on the board and came all the way down, and she was like, Dad, I got this. You know, kind of made me tear up a little bit. Like, this is my baby. She's 12, and she's out here surfing. The first time I got on a wave, like, it didn't even seem real. I just started cheering. Like, I was really happy. I was just like, woo! It's like a good environment. Like, it's really positive, so you won't be nervous walking into it, thinking, like, people will judge you, because it's all happy, and then you have people, like, motivating you and, like, 
being like, woohoo, good job and stuff. You know, Nova Scotia is Canada's ocean playground. If you look around, like all the kids that are here, they want to be in the water. So just take advantage of it. I think that there was a lot of circumstances that really prevented people from being able to really learn and to really embrace the water. A lot of black people don't swim because of the fact that they hadn't really had, you know, that much exposure to pools or to water. We hear stories about how a lot of the lakes and, and places where people would swim were segregated. And so you didn't have access to a lake, you know, as a black person. In discovering more about our relationship with water, I wanted to speak to Evelyn C. White, who I respect and admire as a journalist and author. The whole message was that is not us. Mm -hmm. Not only is it not us in terms of no representation, mm -hmm. but it is psychically dangerous. Mm -hmm. Water represents danger. The whole issue about black people being chased through swamps, mm -hmm. you know, runaway slaves going through the swamps and hiding in, in, in swamps, trying to find refuge there. The South was horrible and uh, fire hoses turned on black children. I saw those television images, mm -hmm. the segregated water fountains, you know, colored white, mm -hmm. and you see that the colored water fountain is all rusty. And then the whole thing of just, well, why would I go swimming? Because I don't see anybody like who looks like me swimming. Yeah. It was important for me to put Lamia into swimming lessons because it was something that I couldn't do. So I wanted her to be able to accomplish that. And I know it's better if you learn at a younger age where you're not so fearful of it. You know, I don't know if I would be a swimmer if I hadn't had that intervention, um, you know, for somebody saying you're going to go in swimming at such an early age. The majority of the people living in North Preston cannot swim, so. I can't swim, but I'm going to learn. And Lamy is going to say, going to help me. Right, Lamy? Yeah, I can't swim, but I really want to learn how to swim. When we were young, one of our friends drowned in the water and we never went back down again. A lot of us, my age, we never went back to learn how to swim. We know that 70% of people of African descent and the North American content do not know how to swim. Mm -hmm. We know that only 13% of blacks will swim if their parents haven't learned how to swim. Mm -hmm. So it's a thing that comes from, you know, parents and, and safety and, and support. We know that black kids of a certain age are 10 times more likely to drown in a swimming pool mm -hmm. than white kids are. So there is death on the other side of this swimming thing. That's one of the things that mm -hmm. I uh, dedicated myself to doing was learning how to swim. Yeah. And at one point I lived in Seattle mm -hmm. and my partner at the time was an excellent swimmer. You know, mm -hmm. she like raced yachts or something. <laughs> and so we went out one day and she put the life vest on me. And this black kid sort of walked up to me and he said, I've never forgotten. And he said, is that white lady teaching you how to swim? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, it, I still like just... Yeah. Obviously, yeah, it tear, tears me up Yeah, because he's, he could see like this white person doing yeah. something, trying to help me. He yeah. knew I couldn't swim. Yeah. He couldn't swim. Mm -hmm. And so he said, is that white lady teaching you how to swim? Mm. So there's yeah. the deep resonance. We want to go into the water, mm -hmm. but we have these fears. Mm -hmm. When we first started, you know, even beginning having conversations about potentially offering a surfing program, I was really surprised by all the different reactions that I would get from people. I would talk to people and I would see their faces change. Like I would see that there's something there that they weren't saying and, and that they would just say no right away. And then what happened is that people started to tell me stories. 
Some people have had very traumatic experiences of people dying. How many of those stories were so present as some people were really looking forward to the opportunity, some people were really afraid. We don't necessarily want to push those stories aside anymore. We want to honor the life of, of those that we've lost and we have the surfing program as a way to do that. And so I think it was really um, interesting for me to be able to navigate all those different reactions and to really f take all of that into consideration when we were creating a program because we wanted to, for people to, to know that we were doing it safely. But we also were trying to push people a little bit. We were trying to say, you know, these things have happened and, and yes, there's lots of dangerous things that can happen at any point in time with lots of activities, but you know, would you be willing to try this? I feel that as a child, I really didn't go to the ocean very much. Like it wasn't something that we did as a family. No one in my family is like a very confident person in the water. Like my mom wasn't really into the water and I always had this pull and like wanted to swim and wanted to be out there. Yeah, it just felt like there was a part of me that I was reclaiming that otherwise would have just you know, I could have accepted the fear of the ocean and just stayed with that, I guess, for my life, but I really wanted to see what was kind of on the other side of that. Anytime I'm getting ready to get into the water, I try and take a couple moments beforehand to just center myself in my body. I take a couple breath of gratitude and just thank all the ancestors before me that allowed you know, my journey to lead me to this place that I can be there and like enter in and step into this experience. For so many years, someone like me wouldn't have been allowed to express like themselves or be in nature in that way. I really feel just so humble and grateful to even stand on the shore and just kind of like look at other people doing that and, and to step out there and kind of own my place in that feels really just like so much bigger than me. I really feel that the ocean is a place for everybody and it's like reclaiming our unique stories and our unique experiences and stepping back into the places where we've been told we didn't belong and you know that's been generationally like handed down so it's amazing now to go to the beach and to see lots of people of color. It's just like, it makes me cry every single time because I just think of, you know, my, my mom and my uncles never saw that. And like my grandparents never saw that. And my grandmother still would never be comfortable like going to the beach, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like these barriers that, that we've lived with and kind of adapted into. And so it just feels super powerful to be stepping into that, to be showing up, you know, again and again, and to kind of like reclaim our glory out there and, and, and reclaim what we're capable of in the water. During my pregnancy, I feel I've noticed a lot more the emotional subtleties that I'm experiencing. Other times I'm just kind of like in the euphoric, like woohoo, I'm going surfing, and I try not to get into just being pregnant, I'm taking it, everything's deep. <laughs> like I can't help but really feel things. And it's been interesting in my changing body and squishing myself into my wetsuit and <laughs> still showing up in the water and on the beach and, and seeing people seeing me, like there's actually no hiding at all. Like even if I weren't pregnant, I'm still like a woman of color out there in the surf. That's my journey. The times that I do go out now, I'm so much more aware of just kind of like bowing to the power of the ocean and like, you know what I mean? Like ocean mother and like, I'm kind of stepping into this like motherhood and this idea of becoming. And I think we're often so focused in our society of like already being there. I really feel that the program with Preston has 
kind of influenced me to own that. And, you know, how can I ask these young girls to, you know, show up with the fear and like be afraid and do it anyway if I'm not embodying that in myself and my journey. The walking slower makes it hard. I know it's true. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. We're at um, Lawrencetown Beach, Beach and we're going to surfing the surfing contest thing. And I'm hot. And I want to get in the water. Yeah. Coming back to you with the Lawrencetown Surfers Alliance Grom Comp 2020. I'd like to hand the mic off for a second to our representative from North Preston Surf Club, Maria Reddick, to say a couple words on the history we're making with some of our participants coming out today. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. North Preston Surf is a new initiative that started. Um, as a result to bring more diversity to the water. Um, and so we're really excited that we've got three participants in the surf competition. And so this is a really big historical moment for us um, here in our province. And so we're really here to cheer them on and to say congratulations to them and to everybody else that's um, participating today. Not only did we make history that day by having three participants join and try it for the first time, we actually had one of our volunteers win the whole competition. And Juniper is an example for these young girls as to what's possible. I mean, the North Preston Surf Program is important because it's never existed. It addresses a racial disparity that has existed for ages. It addresses a safety concern with the inception in slavery. It addresses historical racisms of segregation and segregated beaches all over the world. Whether these kids know it or not, they're making change by just coming and showing up. And then to see the parents and the grandparents out there and to see their face light up and like, they'll come over to me and be like, you're gonna make sure they're safe, right? And like, that's, that is also the other goal is that it's not just about having fun and breaking those barriers, but it's providing them with that safety and the knowledge of the ocean and the water, which has taken from us years ago. So to give that back to them and to be part of that is giant. That's the best thing that ever happened to us, for the kids. They can't wait until every Tuesday come. They call me, hey, Maisie, are you going out to surf? Right? They know I can't surf, but I tell them, yeah and I can't wait to go. They're gonna benefit from being able to swim. Like, you know, they don't have to just sit on the sidelines. Like, they can put their bathing suits on and they can go and swim and actually get even exercise. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just so much they can do with the, the just learning how to swim. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's so much more opportunities for them. The thing that I've really taken in with the, the, the surfing and mm -hmm. so impressive to me mm -hmm. is that it demands a certain mastery. Mm -hmm. So not only are black folk in the water, mm -hmm. but we're like killing it, mm -hmm. you know? That's it. You let us in and we sort of can take it to a whole other level. Mm -hmm. And so when I went out that day and seeing like the black <laughs> kids, you know, just not only surfing, but like seriously yeah. putting some soul, you know, in, in the surfing. You let us in and give us the basics, mm -hmm. and then usually we put our own flavor on it. To be exposed to the surf from a younger age and to feel that it's like a place for you where you can go and 
emotionally regulate. You can have a space where you can feel strong and you can feel like you can be vulnerable and you can kind of take those lessons that you've learned in the water and bring them into your experience on land and see a greater picture for yourself. Even if it's like a bad surf, it's still a good surf in a way. It's like you've learned something about yourself or about your ability to adapt or the kind of thought patterns we can kind of get stuck in on land. I find it so much easier to see all of that a little bit clearer in the water. I feel excited at the idea of what the world can be. I hope that this little one really feels that they don't have to kind of unlearn all of the fear or unlearn all of the stories like I had to of it not being my space, that they just grow into knowing that like they're welcome and that the water is theirs too. There's so much going on in the world that when everyone comes to the surfing program, time kind of stands still for a moment. That really helps to heal the generational trauma and also like, you know, some of the recent trauma that, that we see in the world. I think that they're also taking away with them a belief that they're loved and cared about. All the volunteers show that they're really here for the youth and for the kids. And so I think that this is really beautiful relationship happening and developing with the volunteers and the participants. And for them to know that they've got all of these adults that support them is really huge. The landscape for youth development in North Preston is, is underdeveloped and under-resourced. And so, you know, there is space to grow and, and to keep developing the youth programming in North Preston so that we can provide positive um, pathways for, for kids and that we can keep them off the streets and, you know, give them opportunities to, to take their interest and their passions further. I'd like to challenge people simply to notice the places where representation doesn't exist yet. You know, we should be questioning at, at this point in all of our lives of like, why don't spaces feel safe or why don't spaces feel inclusive? And that, you know, it's kind of on all of us to make spaces that do feel safe and inclusive and, and to not just label them as such but to have people of color in our communities, to have newcomer populations in our communities that feel like, yeah, I'm welcome here. Realistically, change doesn't begin with like an organization or some sort of movement. That's like the change you see in the public and everyone's seeing. But the change begins at home, at the dinner table, in the locker room, in the taxi cabs that you take and your phone calls. Addressing all of those things there is how it gets changed. And the more you're able to push through that uncomfortableness in the water, in court, in school, in anything, you'll always come out better. And it's tough, don't get me wrong. It's tough to be uncomfortable, it's tough to be vulnerable. But the day after, or the moments after, there's a certain lift, there is a, an enlightenment that you feel. And that enlightenment, that flow, that progress, it's, it's what we, I live for. And it's, it's humanity, it's what we're all trying to get. I hope that this program actually opens people's eyes and creates some kind of a spark where people feel like they can make change in their own community. I think when we know each other, when we care for each other, when we have an understanding of people who are different from ourselves to the point where we realize how similar we all are really, I think that is how you build a community, that's how you build cooperation and partnership and these grassroots type of programs and community connections create a ripple effect that can go out into the whole world. Surfing is a great vehicle for that, but I think recreation and sports and music and films and art are all really great vehicles for that. So. I hope that people look at this and feel inspired to 
create relationships with different cultures and build programs, relationships, ideas on those platforms and move forward together to make positive change. Our ancestors died, mm -hmm. made so many sacrifices mm -hmm. for us to be free. Mm -hmm. And so my sense is that we should be free in, in all realms. What am I gonna do with this one life that I have? Mm -hmm. And so people can step up and really have the best life mm -hmm. that they want to have. But you have to be willing to move toward it. And with the race issue, there's so much, you know, fear, resentment, lack of trust, perhaps being in an uncomfortable space. I think people are hungry for opportunities mm -hmm. to make a difference. I hope that people will understand why we are running a program like this. And I hope that there is uh, an opportunity for people to learn more about North Preston as a result of, of hearing about our story and, and the fact that we surf. And not only do we surf, we sing and we dance and, and we, you know, like we, there's just so much to know about us as a community and as a people. And I really hope that this program opens up people's eyes to who we are. There's a future that we can't see yet that's really present in, in the programming that we're doing because we see kids changing you know, their relationship to water. And we're doing something so new in Nova Scotia that is really gonna have like long-term impacts that we can't quite know yet. I see that the youth come to the program and they try to be better and better at their surfing skills. And I kind of take that as inspiration as to like, how do I continue to show up in the world and in the community better? My relationship with water is ever changing and growing. The ocean is a place to recharge in this hard world. One where we can let go of the pressures we feel. Together, we will collectively heal.